Good morning. So let's just jump right into the discussion of killing flies. We live out in the country and we have a lot of flies, um, but we always have. In every house I've lived in, there have been flies that fly in the door. And for some reason, you can open the door, but they don't fly back out. There's a lot of great stuff outside that they could be flying out to, but they're little tiny brains won't let them fly back out the door and it's morning and my favorite mug I'm having Hawaiian uh, Hawaiian grog decaf so I always have to drink decaf my glasses are adjusting to the light these are a different pair of glasses as you may notice my favorite glasses are scratched and uh, they look the best, but I really want to go back to contacts. So we'll talk about that later. Anyway, this, I've noticed every single person who picks this up does it wrong. Okay, it looks like a tennis racket and it has a button that's right here. And when you, when you engage the button, the light goes on. So people think, oh, tennis, the bee, I mean, the fly is flying around extremely quickly. I need to swing really quickly to hit that fly. That is exactly wrong. You cannot outfly a fly. Flies are extremely fast as they fly around. So you very stealthy have to hold the button in and move super slowly. You'll think you're not, you're moving too, too slowly. Just keep going slowly. Wait till the fly is sitting on something at once. You know, it's just sitting on the table. It's not moving. It's not going to leave for a few seconds. So you have time. Just wait. Be a ninja. You just very slowly creep towards the fly. And it'll, you know, or you can, you know, you can get close enough quickly. But once you get within a few inches of the fly, that's when the fly flies away. So you would turn it on and move it close. I was dying to know how. So yesterday, anyway, as you get closer, you come down above the fly and then the fly will fly upwards and right into your gadget. But you know, you're almost just trapping it between the thing. It's not going, if you go slow enough, it's like this, this is the speed. I would say no faster than this to get that fly. Okay, you swing it wildly around and you'll break it in half like we did our last one. <laughs> but um, got this at Aldi for four bucks. $3.99 and um, now that I know how to use it, it's very effective. So that's all for that. Um, what's that other thing I was talking about? I'll just wait for you to comment. I see there's somebody watching. Hi. So I'll wait for you to comment and I'll try and read your comment and then we can talk about something else. Mm. I went to the pottery studio yesterday. I'll just babble. I'll just babble, Lara. Hey, Chuck, what's going on? You know, that's so funny. You said, hey, B, hey, B, hey, beautiful. Well, do you like the new glasses or without the glasses or with the glasses or without the glasses? I'm thinking of going back to contacts now that hopefully I can afford them again. <laughs> okay. So, has the greenhouse. Chuck has amazing greenhouses or greenhouse. It's huge. And uh, so are you selling your, are you selling at a market or do people just come to you to buy the stuff at the green, from the greenhouse? Because there are no people who could eat that much food. <laughs> um, I grew a bunch of tomatoes. I have still have tons and I cut up nine pounds of tomatoes and um, put them in a pot, started cooking it, got a little sleepy, walked away, and I burned nine pounds of tomatoes and had to throw them away. I was very sad. Um, but to make myself feel better, I went out and bought a new blender. Four greenhouses. Okay, you're in business, dude. Four greenhouses. That's amazing. That is so cool. I don't know how you manage all that. I can barely manage our tiny gardens here, but I do have a couple of other things going on. 
Yeah, I went down to the pottery studio and I had um, thrown some beautiful, two farmer, nice, two farmers markets, beautiful plates on the wheel. And they're going to be um, that pumpkin color with the ice blue dripping glaze over it. And I cannot wait until they're out of the kiln. I had to, um, what is this? Like, why is the, the shadow here? It makes it look really weird on my neck. Is my neck that weird? No, I guess it's just the sun hitting it in a funny way. Anyway, um, this, this pumpkin in blue, I showed you the, the glazes on a recent video on some of my pottery. I think the video is called like, uh, showing off pottery or something like that. And it was, um, uh, one of, one of my live streams closed up or just like, uh, sometimes my internet connection just completely disappears as well as my phone connection. And it's just, you know, living out in a rural area, you just, there's some things you have to deal with and that's one of them. And, um, so anyway, that's where that video is. Okay. Bye, Chuck. <laughs> okay, don't anybody else leave. Who, whoever's here is not allowed to leave. Okay, so um, these plates, I have four of these plates that are pumpkin and blue. <laughs> um, you'll have to tell me what state you're in again so I can remember to come visit you. <laughs> We're gonna be traveling more, which is great. So I am sorry about showing my pits. That's probably really impolite in some cultures. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even showered yet. Um, <laughs> okay, so I did those four plates and then I did a cup with a handle that's a lot like this, but taller and the handle's higher, which is good when you stack your mugs. You don't want the handles to be flat like this. Although this is extremely comfortable to hold, it doesn't stack well in the cabinets. <laughs> Come and visit your chair. Okay, your channel, Tennessee. Your channel's a lot closer for me to visit, so I think I'll I'll take that option. Yeah, I'll come visit you. Everybody go visit Chuck's channel. <laughs> uh, Fester, Fester, Fester Farm Greenhouse. <laughs> yes, I believe uh, you have invited me to the farm before. That would be lovely. Um, and I have not been to Tennessee, I don't think. I think that's one of the states I've missed. But very soon, and I'll certainly make some video when I go, but um, we're, we're going up to, we got to go over to Albuquerque. We got to spend the night there. My husband has some business in Albuquerque. And then I am going to see my folks who are there, my peeps. And then I'm going to, the family and I are driving north and we're going to camp out somewhere where it's really high and really cool. And I mean temperature cool because we are all so sick of the heat at this point. Like June has been absolutely stifling. It's killing all of our plants. And um, yeah, it just stinks. It just stinks being so cool. And hopefully we don't miss our second peach tree harvest and our on our pear trees. Those are doing okay. Um, my husband waters them pretty regularly. The grapes are drying out on the vine. They're like, they turn purple and turn to dust at the same rate. This, this, uh, this early, whatever we're having here, this ridiculously early summer, this super short spring, uh, it's just, it's just miserable. I don't know how people, I don't know how people survive this historically. Um, I mean, if you just, if everything dies before you get to collect it, then there's just no food. There's no, you know, how did, how did they grow? How did they live here? Native Americans lived here. Although there was probably a lot more wildlife to, uh, to catch. I mean, we see deer all the time and we see bunnies, but there's nowhere near the deer and bunny population that you would need to survive now. Too many houses, too many people, too many, uh, probably people, people with larger pieces of land are allowed to hunt and they do. So, yeah, I don't know how people survived before and how much, how hard a life it would have been to scratch out life out of the dirt, you know? I mean, every minute of your day had to be thinking about how you're gonna make it to the next day. And I am grateful that life is not that way anymore. Hello, Pickerick. One. <laughs> how are you? Um, now I think Chuck took off. <laughs> Chuck's gone now, but um, 
he had to go to work. So yes, it's another pajama morning. Here is my sampling of my lovely pajama pants that I have on today. So what are you guys going to do with your day today? It is the day before the 4th of July. There is a huge party. Yeah, there's a huge party down the street from us. And the people have decided not to consider the burn ban that is in, in effect for the, the county. And I, I think that's really, I don't think that's such a good idea. Everything is extremely dry, as I was saying about our gardens and everything's drying up and our blueberries dry to a crisp before they ripened. I mean, they, they, I mean, it was like all at once and that stinks. That was our first year we were going to get blueberries and they're in the shade. They're next to the woods, uh, as well protected as possible. But this summer's just too harsh. It's just too rough. So anyway, they're going to shoot off fireworks and they're going to probably drink a lot of beer. <laughs> what did you, why did you get banned from streaming? I, I think, um, you know, as a cautionary tale, I would like to know why. Um... Oh, okay. So it was a copyright infringement um, issue. Sorry, I had to pull my feet up. I just, I didn't have a footrest. Oh, okay. So the copyright infringement thing is just crazy. I mean, my, my son keeps telling me the EU has banned memes. Are you kidding me? How do you ban a meme? How do you, are you, <laughs> you're under arrest, sir. Why? You've created a meme. I don't understand that. I mean, the internet, I guess at the internet's inception, it was a whole different thing than it is now. And it was all about sharing other people's material and um, you know it just it just makes you long for a time of complete lawlessness imagine you saw a dress you know say it's the 1800s and you're flipping through the old Sears and Roebuck catalog right and you see a pretty dress in there and you're like oh my goodness I can't afford this I can't afford this pattern so I'm just gonna figure it out myself and put it together myself hi Nick, oh, let me, um, tell me, tell us where you're from again. <laughs> My, Macedonia. My brain just drew a blank. Um, so anyway, you look in the catalog and you see a dress and you're like, wow, I'm going to, I'm good. Good morning. It's, uh, very early right now. Um, all I've done is get the chickens out so far. <laughs> I'll be around. If not, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, did, did you get a look at it? <laughs> it's pretty dark. So yeah, the part you missed was how to kill flies with this thing. It's all about being stealthy and slow. Super slow. You have to kind of center yourself like the same way when you're going to make a piece of pottery, you have to kind of calm down and not rush it and all that. You calm down and not rush it with that. <laughs> 2.34 in the afternoon. Ugh. Yeah. Luckily, it's not that late. I have a lot to do today. So I'm going to be doing some house sitting for a friend. And she has a beautiful house and a... Rick, you're still there. Chuck, you're still here. Um, she has a beautiful swimming pool overlooking a golf course. And she needs it cleaned while she's out of town. And she needs somebody to check on the cat. And so... Today I have to go over and get instructions and the key and all that stuff. And um, that might be just another thing I add to my list of ways that I either, you know, I earn a few bucks or uh, get to borrow a pool. <laughs> um, you know, so um, I had a long list too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I have to fire some. Aww. You guys are having a little bromance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your bros. Yep. I wish all my plants weren't dying. A greenhouse wouldn't help. It would just, it would just steam it. Maybe sp steamed spinach is good, but not anything else really. So anyway, so I'm going to be house sitting for a couple weeks. And then it's funny because then we have to hire a house sitter who, our house sitter stays here and takes care of everything. That's really cool.
So what kind of videos do you do? <gasps> there is a fly annoying me. Let's test it. Here, ready. There is a fly completely bugging me. You're laying on this. <laughs> I'm not centered. I'm not, I'm not spiritually, no. Um, yeah, so this fly, it's gotta go away. So I'm just gonna fan it away. Don't even have to turn it on for that. So, um, anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. This is no good. Isn't that when you're supposed to take a Kit Kat break? <laughs> All right. There was a, something else interesting. So I recently read a book called Positives, and it's about zombies. Bye. <laughs> It's about zombies and it was extremely brutal. It was bloody and gory and the whole book was just one like miserable sequence to the end of, of miserable sequences. But there were a couple of interesting points in the book that I thought were worth mentioning. And one was um, the, the people who are positive means that they've either been bitten by a zombie or they, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, thousand subs that was pretty cool and it keeps growing all the time but very slowly because I, I haven't been making um, a lot of videos lately I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to wait till I have something good to make a video back about I don't want to just make uh, you know videos about my boring life um, uh, when something interesting happens then I want to invite people in but when when everything's boring I mean do you want to wash me watch me wash dishes I don't think so so we just have discussions okay Excuse me. Get away. There's a fly flying around my stomach crazy. Um, does everybody do that now? I'm doing that only because my videos don't get a lot of views. Um, I have plenty of subscribers, but those subscribers aren't tuning back in to, to view all the time. And I think what people really need to do is click the bell. Um, the people who really want to know uh, if I've come out with a new video, those people will actually seek it out. But the other people, they're hoping to just get notified. They think, they think, you know, I'm gonna kill that fly. Drive me crazy. Um, they think that, you know, just subscribing is gonna is gonna make the videos appear for them, but it's not gonna work. Um, YouTube also, like you do one thing, you say one word that they don't like, and they just stop directing people. They stop suggesting your video for a while, I think. And so um, hopefully, you know, I said one word and it wasn't a bad word. It was a word that, um, it's the fly, I keep, the fly. So it was the word, it was a word that I'm not gonna even spell out because that probably, but um, it's a word for something that you can get at the, uh, that's another word, uh, the place at the store where the people in the white coats hand things to you that you're only allowed to get if the doctor gave you a piece of paper. Um, you can't say that word at all. So don't say that word if you want to not want to get demonetized and, and have YouTube not suggest your vi <clears throat> videos anymore. You know, it would really help if there was a rule book so you could learn how to play the game. You know, um, if you could find out, never say these words or, um, you know, um, you know, anyway, figuring out YouTube is just it's it's like they dropped you on a strange planet and there is no map or anything so hello from ireland hi dara so okay so back to this book that i read the interesting thing is that the um when when people go and get the help of the government usually um or, or go to the government camps then they're um they're mistreated. Like all these people who have been exposed to the zombie disease at some point get a tattoo that looks like a, a plus that's huge, like a huge black plus mark they put on the hand of the positives. And then they, uh, then they, when they go to different cities that are, you know, walled in and somebody's positive in that city. And this is not somebody who's come down with the disease. It's just somebody like, it's like, um, it's like another disease where they might say a person's positive. Um, so anyway, uh, it just means you could you could come down with it. So they move them to camps, and in the camps, 
you know, people are mistreated and they are starved and they are, they have forced labor and it's disgusting situation. Like just living in the mud and living in, you know, corrugated metal shacks and, you know, like third world is third world bad enough. Is there a fourth world? It's like hideous conditions, hideous prisoner camp type conditions. Okay. I'm not recommending you read this book. So I'm going to go ahead and just lay it all out. The cool thing, like, then there's uh, another place that people live, which would be looter camps. And those not very respected people who go from house to house and steal everything that they can find in empty houses. Not that I can see anything wrong with that, like after a situation happens. I mean, I don't imagine those people are ever coming back. <laughs> like 20 years on, are people ever coming back to these houses that were abandoned, like when everyone was dying from a disease? I don't think so. So anyway, so, they, so there's these looter camps and in the looter camps, you know, you can get the things you need, but you're kind of around really seedy, bad people. And there's no law, and it's like just complete anarchy. And then there's, uh, there's the military that is still f starts fighting this, this death cult, this people who worship a skeleton and who demand that people follow them. And in order to follow them, you have to prove your loyalty by killing off somebody in your group, so somebody that you love. And so it's really sick. It, I mean, it, some of it's really sick, but it be, in other things I've read that that's a, a likely scenario that people will make up new religions in times of distress and think they can appease the gods. They would say, I'm going to save my life by sacrificing someone else's life. And, you know, that, that um, I don't know if all religions have that, but there's certainly a human sacrifice element to a lot of different cultures, religions. Um, uh, somebody has to, uh, somebody has to, um, die to, to uh, eliminate the sins of another other people so that they can um, you know move up or or you know or somebody has to be punished and become some other creature or something you know it's just an element that's very common but I mean they take it a little far when they start sacrificing people <laughs> but I mean the, did, I, I don't know much about the South American cultures but I thought that they I thought that I, I remember something Mayans or something would sacrifice people Maybe it was just the bad people, you know, the people you really needed to, or the people that could not be cared for in another way. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who you choose to sacrifice. Maybe it's a virgin. I don't know. But anyway, they had this cult and this cult was, uh, you know, offering protection for people if they did what they were told. And that would be, you know, if you were naughty, you had to eliminate 10% of your people and your group would be decimated. That was my favorite thing in the book. They actually use the real definition of decimated. Oh, you're not allowed to say that other thing either? Okay. Yeah, um, that if you can tell me all the words, if you all know, I know words that you're not, not allowed to say on YouTube. And I was thinking maybe I should just make like a blog post or something. Like I don't write on my blog ever. Um, Mostly, mostly because I have a hard time getting in and out of WordPress to, to write the blog. So, um, but maybe we can all come up with a list of words that you know you said that you think got your video um, D la 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 monetized. <laughs> See, maybe saying that word does it too. I don't know. So um, I'll just say la 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 and then that will take, you know. <laughs> that will take it. So, um, back to the camps. Okay, so they had looter camps, and they had this death cult, like a protection cult, and you had to be a bad guy, too, to be part of it. But that's the same way gangs operate. I recall when there was, um, when I lived in Albuquerque, they would have, uh, there were gangs, and they would have initiation things, and you had to go do something pretty much pure evil to uh, to join a gang. And one of my friends from work when I worked in the factory, which was a really seedy job working from two to midnight uh, for, for Motorola. <laughs> well, he, he was, um, I don't know if it was after work or during the day, but he walked into a 7-Eleven in a nice part of town and a guy um, slashed him right through here. And he had to have a whole bunch of um, like things sewn back together, ligaments or tendons or something blank <laughs> okay 
when in doubt, say blank. So blank is definitely not one of the words. Okay, so he, um, oh, I wish you would um, send that to me. I can't see the, uh, I don't think I can see the chats for a while, if at all, after the video, um, after this video gets uh, put up. So um, maybe comment under another video, just put the name of the book that you think I should read and the author and any video and I'll see it. Um, that would be great. Okay, so he had this cut cut through here and he was had to go through re a bunch of rehabilitation and stuff to be able to use his hand again. And our work that we were doing was picking up a tiny piece, sticking it in a machine, and then you take a little, like a Dremel bit and you go zzz, 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 on this uh, fine silver paint that they had painted a, um, not a barcode, but a, uh, a circuit board was painted in silver paint on the surface of these filters. And we had to edit that filter a little bit because th there, there was a point at which they couldn't, they couldn't print them perfectly. So we had to edit them so it would get a certain frequency uh, would come through our machine. And so there was this little bell curve you wanted, but if the paint was a little too thick in a spot, your bell curve would look like crumpled at the bottom or something. And you tap it a few times and just, some, it was a thing that only humans could do. And you just got a feel for it. You didn't even, um, I, had a fr I had a friend train me to do it. Um, it wasn't a thing that was like, you know, first click A, then press B and then press C and then your, your thing is done. It wasn't that, it was like an art form. I mean, you just, everybody had their own style. You could pretty much look at where the, the little tiny, tiny ceramic things Oh my gosh, one of my friend's daughters was bit by a rattlesnake. Oh no. Um, so anyway, my, one of my friends just texted me. I did, I, I'm gonna have to go in a few minutes and figure out what that's all about, but that's really scary. We have, um, I haven't seen any here, but I know they're around. She said, it's very sad and it's really serious. Well, I hope to stay away from rattlesnakes. As you know, as you may know, if you've been following me for a while, um, when the Obamacare Act got signed in, it wasn't just a few months before, <clears throat> flies, it wasn't just a few months before um, I lost my insurance. Hello from Iran. How are you? I hope things are going okay for you over there. I've been following in the news and, you know, my heart just goes out to you if you're, if, if Iran is in, you know, economic free fall. I feel like um, other countries are following very rapidly or leading the way on that. So I hope that things are okay over there um, and that maybe you're not noticing or you're prepared on your own um, to make sure that your family is, is going to be, uh, be okay through that. Anyway, um, yeah, I watch a lot of economic news. So sometimes I say something that like is happening in the economic news and people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like one time I was talking to somebody from Canada and I said, wasn't that crazy that your com your country just got rid of all its gold reserves? I mean, that you guys just don't have any gold anymore, you know, to back up your currency. And she was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, that wasn't, that wasn't big news over there in Canada. You know, like what the heck? At least in the United States, we think we have gold. <laughs> I, I mean, no one will, no one has forced the Fed to be audited or the, um, or the, uh, what, what is it, um, the Treasury or Fort Knox or whatever. Um, I mean, cert certain uh, government officials have wanted to audit these, uh, these reserves that we supposedly have. So, oh, I saw a t-shirt, it was really great. It, w it said about the Federal Reserve, it said, not federal, no reserves. <laughs> well, um, that's what, you get the wrong story. Julie, hey Jenny, how are you? Jenny is quite the, um, uh, you should, the, uh, yeah, there's another thing you can't talk about. You can't talk about these. You can't because the, you'll immediately get censored and no one will go to your channel anymore. So yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm sending you live. Um, seeing you live. Yeah. For once. Yes, Jenny. I'm, I am live and I'm in my PJs. This is our. Good morning, pajama chat from Texas. <laughs> um, the sun is the sun is just over the 
horizon over here and it's kind of killing me. Maybe we should turn a little. Just a moment. You do not want to see that extreme close up in the morning and neither do I. How about that? That's a little better. So see this baby? That was repaired. It's not in original condition, so it's not sealed. You can't use it in the house, but it's a great plate. It's Julian or Jammies. I, you know what? Do you think there is a channel for Julian or Jammies? The funniest thing about Sunday was, um, it was, I took a day to be like so out of my nature, but a day to be like really lazy. I only threw three pots on the pottery wheel and I only um, made breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the rest of the day, I did almost nothing. I wore my pajamas until five in the five or six o'clock at night. And then I took them off, I showered, and I put on new pajamas. <laughs> it was the greatest. I just, I just love a Sunday where you don't have to go anywhere, or you don't have to do anything, and you can just, you know, chill. And that's how I got so far through my book that I finally finished, which I do not recommend reading. Okay. But I don't like to leave the house. I stay in my jammies all day. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if no, if you're not seeing anybody or and you're not doing your, you can do your your jammy video. You know, um, some people can work in their work in their jammies all day long and nobody knows they work from home. Um, but I have I have people come over uh, for pottery classes and stuff, and that wouldn't be really professional to accept them in my jammies. I did the other day. I had. I was a little tired on Monday morning. I forgot to look at my calendar and some people rang the bell and I still had my jammy pants on and those jammy pants are super, actually all my jammy pants are super obviously jammy pants and not like, you can't just make them pass. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't actually get to read either of the two things that popped up. Um, so, so anyway, but then I sat back in the day and I thought three pieces of pottery, that's like not, not working. And then, and then what if, listen to this, what if Susan wasn't lazy at all? Think about it. Okay. So then, um, I mean, cooking three meals from scratch and yeah, I did. I cooked three meals from scratch and I made three potteries and I didn't get out of my jammies. The only reason why I changed them was because I got clay on them. So it's not good to, I mean, I, it's so hard to keep everything clean with clay around here. So, okay. I've sent you the link, but you might have to translate it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I saw that you did, that you sent it. It popped up on my screen. Right. What if Susan wasn't lazy at all? Okay. What if Susan, do you guys not get that? Do you not think that's funny? Cause I'm not hearing any laughter here. Okay, but the rest of the time I was on the couch reading the book and there's some very large bug just banging itself against the wall. So what in the heck is that? It's literally this long. Should we go look at that bug and see what it is? <laughs> you do get my joke. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera around for just a second. Okay. Okay, you missed the bug. Sorry about that. It was huge, but I'm glad it's gone. Because the buzzier the bug, the less I really, the less I really want to um, engage with it. <laughs> I'm afraid it'll be one of those. Um, what do they call them? Cow killer wasps. We have those out here. We've seen them a few times, and they I, they make their nests in the ground. And sometimes you'll see them on the ground. And then there's the um, the tarantula wasp and what that one does is pretty sick. You think nature, nature's not a friendly thing all the time. I hardly ever is totally friendly, but um, this wasp, first it knocks, it tranquilizes the, um, the tarantula or the big furry spiders, whatever kind they are. And it, so it stings them and it gives it like a, like a, um, it paralyzes the thing. So the thing's still uh, aware of what's happening. It just can't move. It's like, Okay. And then the wasp lays its eggs inside the body of that tarantula. And then it, it takes over, it zombifies that tarantula and it grows babies inside of it, which eventually kills the thing when the babies hatch. But that's kind of sick. Nature's kind of sick sometimes, isn't it? So yeah, wasps are a big, a big problem 
you know, in nature, but they really, you know, if you, if you just stay away from them, they stay away from you pretty good. Yesterday, I wanted to make a video yesterday, but all my little chips were full and I didn't have a time. Oh, you're welcome. Sure, sure thing I'll gross you out and scare you. When my grand, when my granddad was young, he was plowing. Oh no, scary story. Is it going to be bees? Is it going to be killer bees? And hit A, okay. The the um, the um, what do you call it? A wasp's nest. <gasps> oh wait, so did he survive? Because <laughs> that sounds really bad. But why do they make wasps nest so big? Why do they have to be so big and scary? Three weeks in the hospital. Wow. So if like me and um, in the United States, we had this insurance overhaul, it was supposedly called the Affordable Care Act. And ever since uh, soon after, right immediately, soon after that, as soon as the new insurance plans came out, I was unable to afford insurance anymore. And there are so many people in this situation. And so today, oh, I'm gonna say, I, I was gonna say a word I'm not supposed to say, but let me just point today, right here, there was kind of a, a lump there. And um, normally people would go to a doctor and would go get an x-ray and see what it is. So yeah, Jenny, see, it's just absolutely, it's absolutely unaffordable. If I wanted insurance, I'd have to move out of my house and move to somewhere cheaper. And I don't even know places cheaper because I mean, except maybe apartments, but you know, um, I think, you know, you have to make a choice in life. And I think my lifestyle is healthier out here with a little woods and farm animals and a little uh, fresh food growing on the trees, the stuff that hasn't dried up yet. My bully tomatoes are doing great. Oh, by the way, if you want black crim seeds, I am going to be make, I'm going to save every black crim tomato seed. This is like this exotic tomato that they sell for $5 a piece at Central Market. I'm saving up all those seeds. I think I might try to sell them. <laughs> They're awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a beautiful tomato. It doesn't really have tons of seeds in the tomato itself, which is great. It's mostly meat. The flavor is awesome. And I was just eating it off a fork, dipping it in ranch last night. It's so healthy dipping everything in ranch. You should do that. <laughs> LOL. Okay. With what animals would you like to have? Um, well, we have, Right now, I don't know if you're familiar, but we have uh, we have seven bunnies right now, and so I need to which <laughs> which there's two different kinds of which um, one pointed hat and rides on a broomstick, and the other kind is like when you say which one, and that's the other kind. Okay, so I love people claim they're eating healthy because they have a salad and they cover it. <laughs> I don't even claim I'm eating healthy. I'm not. Last night I went to the store. I'm not even finishing my stories. Okay, we have seven rabbits. We have 11 chickens and um, two of them are babies. And the 11 chickens are just stinking lazy because they only laid two eggs yesterday. But I have a feeling it's not that they're laying two eggs. I think something, and I hope it's not a rattlesnake, has, something has been in there. I, ugh. So gross. So anyway, something's, I think something's been getting in and stealing some of our eggs because two eggs and nine layers. And well, the, the two broody chickens that I've had for, it's got to have been 20 days now. Um, they obviously will not lay eggs. And Scarlett, she's not going to lay an egg because she's starting to go broody. And so I know, I know these, these chickens, they are, they're freeloading. I'm throwing food at them and they're not throwing the eggs back. You know, if a rabbit laid an egg, it would be the perfect animal. Totally. So, yeah, we have, I know, totally freeloaders. Yeah, so um, the rabbits are good, but I'm still trying to sell through because I don't, okay, I admit it. I don't think I have the heart to eat them myself. Oh, I'm sorry about your cow. Here's a hug. Here's a hug for you and your cow. Poor thing. Um, yeah, cows. a cow would be great, especially if you could get one that was only about yay big, you know, didn't eat much, but you could still get a few cups of milk out of it every day. That would be awesome. Or 
now that would be too much work on a rabbit just to lay eggs, make milk, and also be a meat rabbit. That would be bad. Um, have any, ever, any of you ever tried rabbit? Um, so I want to know because I, I mean, I don't think I have the heart to eat this rabbit, but we'll see. Oh, okay. So what did you think about flavor and texture of rabbit, Jenny? And you ever caught a rabbit because you ain't no friend of mine or something that didn't even make sense. A long time ago, my grandfather raised them. Oh, okay. So yeah, I'd like to know what they taste like. There are three rabbits and um, who need to get sold. <laughs> I put up a poster at one of the feed stores, but I need to. She says it tastes like chicken. Well, that's good because I think that's the right way to eat it. They say that you add extra oil to it when you cook it or, or batter it and cook it. And that way um, it'll get like more of a, you need the oils I guess, to tenderize the meat or something. You should also, I heard, refrigerate it for at least 24 hours to 48 hours so that um, so that it you have a better texture of meat when you finally, dang, it's hot. It is hot, oh my gosh. The thermometer says that it is 87 Fahrenheit. I know some of you are on Celsius and I don't even know. I don't really remember. Okay. Um, I, I do not know what that is in Celsius, but it's gotta be like 30, right? You have the tail, huh? Sail, I couldn't read that, sorry. That was probably in the, Nicola. That's like saying like they had this commercial for Ricola. Uh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So it is getting too hot out here and I have things to do. So it was awesome chatting with you. And I just, there was one more thing about the book I wanted to say is that they were restarting a civilization and they thought they could get on fine. And I thought it was highly unrealistic about that. But the only thing that I loved more than anything about that book positives was the fact that they said, we're gonna decimate your town. They probably wrote the whole book just so they could point out that decimate actually means to reduce by 10%. Decimate sounds like, I mean, I honestly, you say the word, we're gonna decimate this town. It sounds like you're gonna flatten it or you're gonna destroy the whole thing. But that is not what the definition of that word is. And people misuse it all the time. And it's pretty stinking annoying. So, <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna head out and um, I'm taking my, Fly swatter with me and thanks for chilling and I'll talk to y'all soon.